don't say he's saved the best for the last. That might be rude to Eddie Steele, but they tell me that Justin Dunk is in the bunker back in the rectangle. And we got him. And he's got his jacket on. He's got a sweat on from 3 How are you plane, doing, Justin? Right. Doing well, buddy. I really appreciate you uh, beetling it in, the Adam Schefter of the <laughs> CFL. And I don't know if you just caught... I don't know if you just caught Eddie Steele basically painting a target on the back of Brock Sunderland and letting the arrow go, boom, for what's going on with the Edmonton Elks. Has not been a good week for the Edmonton Elks, Justin. It hasn't been a good year, Roddy. And there's got to be somebody that takes the fall for this. Overall, you look at them, they're the only team in the CFL that had a COVID outbreak. Now, I know that can be random, but the, the fact that it was the Elks that had one of the lowest vaccination rates in the league to me, somebody's, something's got to happen here, especially if they're last in the West. Yeah, well, what, um, what can you tell me about the Brock Sunderland not vaccinated story? Because obviously I got football people blowing up my phone like you do, and a lot of them are saying, how does he encourage players to be vaccinated and coaches if he's not? And I'm saying, I don't even know if he is. I don't know the inside of that situation or that organization. But what is what do you know about Brock Sunderland not being vaccinated? Because as people say, it doesn't show great leadership. Exactly. And I think that there is more to the story overall. And it's something that I'm not like super comfortable talking about because I do believe people's medical records should be their own personal information that they want to put out there. But I will right. say, Roddy, because the Elks put out a statement after TSN reported it, this was not news, though, around the league, right? Like, you all know about this, and there was even people talking about, well, hey, they have this outbreak, but their GM's not vaccinated. So it was almost like they were asking for it in a sense, but there are some people around the league that feel like potentially, and you know, I don't want to spout too many opinions here, but that Sunderland might have been looking for an excuse to back up, you know, not getting vaccinated. And if that's his choice not to do so, you know, I totally respect that. But when you're trying to operate within a Canadian football league that does not want to have games moved around, like the Elks game that had to happen, three in a short time frame, then you either make a choice. And that's what I believe is going on right now in Edmonton with a couple other people as well. That's what I hear. And they're not the only team, I understand as well. Hey, did Ottawa winning Tuesday night, 34-24 over the Edmonton Elks, save general manager Marcel Desjardins' job, or did it just kick the can down the road? Because I was told that a firing was imminent, and as we sit here today, he's still on the job. I don't think it's imminent, to be quite honest. And if anything, Roddy, I'll sort of flip this one on you. I think... The win helps Paul Lapelis more than anybody there because Marcel Desjardins essentially was bringing in the players that Paul Lapelis wanted for most of the season. Matt Nichols, top among them. Lapelis went to ownership, sold Nichols, and that's why Nick Garbuckle ended up in Toronto. Lapelis wanted Timothy Flanders. He continues to start games, even though the football operations department has brought in other players and has strongly encouraged Lapelis to play them, but Flanders is still playing. And what that does, Roddy, is it hurts the team around you because they look at Flanders and see clearly he doesn't have any juice left, with all due respect. Yes, he had the touchdown in the game, but there are younger players that could be better. And that's from insiders on that Ottawa franchise. So I think it helps Lapelis more than anybody there. To be quite honest, there were some rumblings, as you said, that Desjardins could be let go. But he is extremely tight with ownership there. And they run things a little differently. He's always kept the team on budget. So I don't necessarily think Marcel Desjardins is going to have a can tied to him as quickly as people think he will. Hey, how about Chris Jones coming back to the CFL in Toronto? I just flipped it to Eddie. Could you see Chris Jones taking over the entire outfit in Edmonton? I know that's looking a few steps down the road, <laughs> but I'm sure that those Chris Jones articles are the most read at 3downnation.com. Great thing for the CFL. We talked about that the last time you were on with us. How do you see this working out to the end of the season with Chris Jones and the Argos? Well, I think he's going to be beneficial for that Argos defense. And then, as you mentioned, I know that's what we do in sports. We look down the road, right? It's fun. I could see if Brock Sunderland and Jamie Elizondo are let go in Edmonton, Chris Jones being brought in there. He's been there before. You know we can do everything. And most importantly, you know his team's going to be competitive. 
first and foremost. So when I asked Jones directly a couple weeks ago, are you committed to the Argos past the 2021 season? You know, he essentially said, and I'm paraphrasing obviously, but football is very transient. So he's not going to know whether he's going to be there in 2022 in Toronto, that is, until it, it actually happens. And I don't blame him because if something else shakes free, and we've seen some weird stuff happen in the off seasons, Roddy, right? Like Ed Hervey getting fired, coaches leaving like Scott Milanovic. That's why yeah. Jamie Elizondo is head coach in Edmonton. So there are things that can happen, and I could see Jones as a fit in Edmonton. Wonderful having in to having you in to just talk about football stuff uh, for sure. Because well, there's a lot of things going on in the CFL that people don't see. But as far as the games go and these races now in the second half, it's going to be very exciting. That's what people would rather talk about. 90 seconds left. You're a TV guy. You know the drill on that. Just talking about Canadians in the NFL, Justin. How good of a year has it been for Canucks in the four down league? Well, I'll go real quick here on Chuba Hubbard because he's going to get the first start by a Canadian running back in the NFL in 20 years, Roddy, this weekend against the Dallas Cowboys. Your Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? So everybody should be tuned into Hubbard because this is literally once in a generation and even more. The last guy to start an NFL game as a Canadian, Timmy Biakabatuka in 2001 with the Carolina Panthers, oddly enough. He was a first-round draft pick by the team. And then people out here, of course, will remember Ruben Myers. And I think those are the only two guys that come to mind quickly for me as Canadians who started running back in the NFL along now with Hubbard on Sunday. Tim Biakabatuka. Now, there's a name... For $10 million, I couldn't have told you he was the last Canadian to start a game in the National Football League. I couldn't. Good for you for having that one, uh, Justin, and saying it right, by the way. Wow. I was working in pro football in that time, and I don't, I don't remember it. So, man, listen, we packed a lot in this last segment. I really appreciate you dangling into the bunker for this wonderful update. And enjoy uh, the call this weekend, my man. You guys are the best duo in the business. You bet, buddy. I miss seeing you in studio. It's weird being here, but Roddy's not here. He's out in beautiful Florida, so enjoy the time. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Justin Dunk, 3downnation.com insider and Canada West football color commentator with the Moose, Darren DuPont. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see... Hit subscribe, and if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.